Okay, so the next option is a uh, display, and this has uh, five sub options uh, uh, associated with it uh, load colors, save colors, set colors, default colors, and grid step. The first four options allow you to load, save, and set PSP Seek's color scheme. When PSP Seek is first run, it always defaults to the colors you see, however, just about every element can be set to a new color. Uh, PSP Seek has eight unique color schemes which are saved in a file called colors.pci. And uh, these color presets are accessed via load colors. So go to system, uh, go to display, and now we see the five options. Load colors, save colors, set colors, default colors, and grid step. So uh, in, the, in the base version of PSP Seek, when you first start it up, uh, the first five color options and load colors uh, contain different color schemes. Um, and uh, I don't actually have any of these set up for PSP Seek at the moment, so I'm just going to try loading uh, a random color scheme to see what I get. So in this case, um, the only thing that changed was that the background color changed. Um, but if you try selecting one of the first five color schemes, and you'll see some uh, some different uh, color options that were designed by one of the PSP Seek users. Uh, so the second option is, um, so, okay, before I continue, if you want to go back to the default colors, um, so you would select uh, display and then default colors, and it just returns everything back to its normal colors. Um, so the second option under uh, display is uh, save colors, where you, when you select that, then you're given the option of saving this color scheme that you currently have active to one of the color presets. So just save it to seven. And after you select it, then this color scheme is saved into slot seven. Uh, so then the third option is uh, set colors. So going back into the menu system, go to display and select set colors. Now you can see a list of all of the GUI elements and the current color for that element. Uh, to change the color of an element, you use either the square, X, or circle buttons with the analog pad. Holding square and pressing the analog pad up or down, you can add or remove red pigment to the current selected color. So I'm going to push square and then move the uh, analog pad up, and you can see that the color next to background uh, goes from black to red. So I'm going to bring it back down to black. So now if I push X and push uh, sorry, if I push, yeah, if I push X and uh, up on the analog pad, then I add green pigment. And I'll bring it back down again. And then if I push O and push up on the analog pad, we add blue pigment. Uh, you can also hold two or three buttons at the same time to change the red, green, and blue pigments simultaneously. Uh, to copy and paste colors between graphical elements, press the left trigger to copy and the right trigger to paste. So I'm going to select... Uh, the black is a copy, and I'm going to paste it here. So now uh, the sequencer box went from being green, so now they'll all be displayed as black. Uh, so I'm not going to explain what each of these GUI elements means right now. Um, the best thing to do is just to um, try experimenting with, with each of them, try setting them to different colors, and see what you get. Um, so uh, so once you actually have uh, the once you actually have this uh, the colors that you want, then you push the uh, then you push the Y button, or sorry, not the Y button. You push the uh, the triangle button, and uh, that brings up the choice whether or not you really want to set these colors. I will say yes, and you'll see that some of the sequencer boxes are now black. Some of them have uh, disappeared entirely from the screen. So uh, what I'm going to do is uh, go back to the menu system uh, and select display and default colors. So now we have the default colors again. So uh, the last parameter, grid steps, is, uh, is used if you want two different colors to draw steps in the, in the step sequencer. Um, because there are so many steps in the sequencer, some people find it easier to parse the sequencer if two colors are used to denote a specific number of steps. So I'm going to uh, go into uh, display, and I'm going to um, set colors again. 
and I'm going to set the sequencer box offset to a different color. So I'm going to set it to yellow. So now if I push uh, push a triangle and then select really set the colors, now you can see that there are four steps of green and four steps of yellow. So the sequencer um, box offset color has been set. So. Uh, so now the colors alternate every eight steps. Um, this feature is useful if you're trying to compose something in other than 4-4 time. Uh, the spacing and the sequence are designed to work well if you're working in 4-4 uh, in time signature. However, if you're using one that isn't divisible by eight steps, then uh, grid steps can make it easier to see where the quarter notes lie. Uh, let's say you want each quarter note to be every six steps. Uh, if you set the grid steps to six, which I will do now, go to system, select uh, display, grid steps. Push up on the digital pad to set it to 6. You can also use the analog pad to, uh, to change that value. Um, but I'll set it at 6 and push X. Now you can see we have 6 green and 6 yellow, and that alternates all the way through. So now I'm going to go back to the default colors for the rest of the tutorial. So I'll go back to display and default colors. And uh, as you can see, you don't see any of the grid steps in the default setup because the, um, the sequencer boxes, both the regular ones and the offset color, are both the same color.